I'm a 35-year-old woman with a large, tightly knit family, though tight often means being tangled up in each other's business. Growing up, we were always at each other's houses, celebrating holidays and birthdays together, sharing family stories. My family is big on drama too, and sometimes it feels like everyone thrives on it, but I've always tried to stay out of the worst of it. I've got a brother and a sister, and between our parents, aunts, uncles, and cousins, it's like I have this entire small town of relatives. The latest drama, though, is more than anyone could ignore. It all started with my Aunt Lisa and Uncle Brian, who have been going at each other over our grandfather's property, a small house and plot of land that he left behind when he passed away a few years back. Grandpa was the quiet type, but everyone knew he was proud of what he built. Apparently, he didn't leave clear instructions on who should get the property, and now it's become the center of this full-blown family war. Aunt Lisa, who's always been the family caretaker type, insists that the property should be hers. She spent years helping Grandpa around the house, running errands, and organizing family gatherings. According to her, she practically ran that house and poured her own money into keeping it up. On the other hand, Uncle Brian believes he's the rightful owner. He claims that he covered many of Grandpa's bills and did major repairs on the house. Brian's argument is that Grandpa promised the house would go to his family one day as a way to repay him. Now, the family has split into two camps. My brother is firmly on Team Aunt Lisa. He's always been closer to her side of the family. My sister, though, has taken Uncle Brian's side, convinced that he has more of a right to the house. And me? I've tried to stay out of it. I don't want to be dragged into picking sides. I've got my own life to handle, and honestly, I don't need this level of family drama. But my attempts to stay neutral haven't exactly been successful. The family group chats have turned into battle zones with arguments popping up nearly every day. Whenever we're at family gatherings, the air is thick with tension, and both sides drop little jabs or try to pull people over to their side. It's impossible to even have a meal without someone bringing up the property dispute. It's not just an argument, it feels like there's a line drawn down the middle of the family. Then, it escalated to a level I never saw coming. My brother and sister, who normally have a decent relationship, have started fighting over this. They've exchanged some pretty harsh words and seem to be avoiding each other now. They keep trying to rope me into their arguments, asking if I agree with Aunt Lisa's sacrifices or Uncle Brian's contributions. I keep telling them I don't want to get involved, but that just makes them angrier. Apparently, staying out of it is as good as choosing a side in their eyes. The final straw came with a family-wide text blow-up. Someone I still don't know who sent a long message to our family group chat, listing out all the supposed evidence for why Aunt Lisa deserves the property. Within minutes, replies started pouring in, with people from both sides accusing each other of lying, scheming, and being selfish. Words like betrayal and greed were thrown around, and I felt like I was reading a soap opera script. Both Aunt Lisa and Uncle Brian have started messaging me privately, each sharing their version of events and trying to convince me that they're the one who's been wronged. I've even had cousins who barely speak to me on a regular basis, messaging to offer advice about how I should show loyalty to the family by taking a stand. A few relatives have even unfollowed each other on social media, and new private groups are popping up as they try to keep their conversations out of each other's view. When I told everyone I wanted no part in this, that just seemed to make things worse. My siblings called me out for being wishy-washy, accusing me of not being supportive enough of the family. My mother gave me the classic guilt trip, saying, neutrality is betrayal, and told me I owed it to the family to pick a side. She believes supporting Uncle Brian is the right thing to do, and she's not hiding her disappointment in me. At this point, I feel like I'm stuck in a lose-lose situation. If I take a side, I risk damaging my relationships with half the family. But if I continue to stay out of it, I'm going to keep facing the pressure, the guilt trips, and the accusations. I can't scroll through my social media without seeing posts that feel like indirect jabs at me, and family gatherings feel more like minefields. I wish this property dispute had stayed between Aunt Lisa and Uncle Brian, but now, everyone's dragged into it. My family, once so close-knit, feels like it's splitting apart at the seams. Everyone's drawing their lines in the sand, and it feels like I'm the only one left on neutral ground, wondering why this piece of land has become worth all this trouble. Update 1. I went to a family dinner last weekend, hoping maybe we'd get a break from the property drama. It's been weeks of constant bickering in the group chats, and I thought we might all agree to keep things civil in person, at least for a meal. But as soon as I arrived, it was clear this dinner wasn't going to be any better than the texts. The energy was tense, and I noticed right away that people were already choosing sides just by where they sat. My brother and a few others were near Aunt Lisa, while my sister sat closer to Uncle Brian. The division was painfully obvious. Dinner hadn't even started when my brother leaned over, quietly but firmly asking why I hadn't shown any support for Aunt Lisa. I tried to brush it off, telling him I just didn't want to get involved, but he shook his head like he was disappointed. My sister overheard and jumped in, saying it was typical of me to sit on the fence. As soon as she spoke up, a few other relatives joined in, and suddenly all eyes were on me. By the time we sat down to eat, the discussion had turned into an interrogation. Every time I tried to change the subject, someone would pull it back to the property and demand to know where I stood. They kept saying I was being a coward, that neutrality means taking sides and silence speaks volumes. Aunt Lisa herself made a pointed comment about how those who truly cared about family would support her. The tension was unbearable and I could feel everyone's eyes on me, waiting for some kind of statement. It didn't end at the table either. When I got home, I checked my phone and sure enough, I'd been unfollowed by a few family members on social media. One cousin even posted something vague about people who can't choose family over ego, clearly directed at me. 
The next morning, I woke up to private messages from both Aunt Lisa and Uncle Brian. Both of them had sent these long, detailed explanations about why they deserved the house. It felt like they each thought if they explained their side well enough, I'd be convinced to back them. The messages didn't stop with Aunt Lisa and Uncle Brian, though. Over the next few days, I was flooded with messages from other family members, some I hadn't spoken to in years, telling me how important it was to honor family loyalty. Everyone seemed to have advice on what I should do, and a lot of it wasn't so subtle. A few even called me selfish and spineless for staying out of it, with comments about how my neutrality hurt the family. Just when I thought it couldn't get worse, my mom called me, sounding emotional and upset. She told me I owed it to the family to support Uncle Brian, her sibling. She reminded me of all the times family had supported each other in the past, trying to guilt me into choosing a side. I told her, again, that I didn't want to get involved. She didn't take it well, making it clear she felt like I was betraying the family. By this point, I was exhausted. It felt like there was no way out of this without someone being disappointed or angry. I started avoiding family gatherings and ignoring calls. I just didn't have the energy to keep arguing or defending my choice to stay neutral. But the pressure didn't let up. Uncle Brian even called one evening and told me that if I didn't support him, he'd cut me out. The real kicker came when Aunt Lisa decided to go public with it. She posted in a family Facebook group, calling me disloyal and uncaring. She didn't mention my name directly, but everyone knew who she meant. Friends started reaching out, wondering what was going on. One of them advised me to just set boundaries with my family, to make it clear I wouldn't be taking sides. But at that point, I worried that drawing a line would only make things worse. That's when my phone buzzed again, this time with a flood of angry texts from my sister. She accused me of choosing the easy way out and told me that my silence made her feel like I didn't care about the family. She went on and on, paragraph after paragraph, blaming me for making things harder by staying neutral. It was overwhelming, and every message just added to the weight of it all. Eventually, I couldn't take it anymore. I started feeling like maybe I should have picked a side just to avoid all this drama, even if it meant aligning myself with one part of the family over the other. The whole situation was eating me up inside, and I felt trapped. With everyone pushing their version of loyalty, I couldn't see a way to keep any peace. Finally, I decided to turn to Reddit. I'd been a lurker on relationship advice threads before and seen people share similar situations, so I figured it might help to hear from others who've dealt with messy family drama. I posted the whole situation anonymously, explaining how my family had been divided over this property and how they'd all pressured me to pick a side. Within minutes, comments started pouring in. People told me to stand my ground and not let my family guilt me into a decision I didn't want to make. Others shared stories about their own family disputes, and reading those replies made me feel less alone. For a brief moment, I felt a strange sense of relief. At least now, I wasn't the only one dealing with this mess, and I finally had some outside perspective on the situation. Update 2. The response to my Reddit post was explosive. Thousands of people commented, most encouraging me to stay neutral and protect my peace, reassuring me that family loyalty doesn't mean getting dragged into a toxic fight. People shared similar family stories, and I even got messages from users who felt relieved they weren't the only ones dealing with family drama. For a brief moment, it felt like I had found a safe place to vent far from the pressures at home. Then the unthinkable happened. My family found the post. I have no idea how it got back to them. But soon enough, relatives were calling, furious. Apparently, some of them had read it and recognized the story right away. Within hours, my phone started blowing up with texts and missed calls. Uncle Brian was outraged, saying I'd disgraced the family by airing our business online. Aunt Lisa was equally furious, accusing me of spreading lies. They were both convinced I'd turned the whole internet against them. Suddenly, what had started as my way to seek support became yet another reason for them to be angry at me. The backlash didn't stop there. I was flooded with messages from cousins, aunts, and even distant relatives, all condemning the post. My mom, who had been pestering me to pick a side, stopped speaking to me altogether. She sent me one text, saying she felt betrayed and calling the post a slap in the face. Then she went silent. Every day, I checked my phone, hoping she'd reach out again, but nothing. It didn't take long for me to start noticing changes in our family group chats, too. First, I was quietly removed from a few of them. The chat with all my cousins? Gone. Another one that was just for immediate family? I got booted from that one too. While a part of me was relieved not to see the endless arguments, being cut off like that felt strange. After all, I hadn't actually taken a side, but suddenly everyone seemed to see me as the enemy. I realized my neutral stance had unintentionally turned me into a target. It was almost like both sides saw me as a traitor, each one accusing me of secretly supporting the other. Aunt Lisa and her supporters spread rumors that I was on Uncle Brian's side, claiming I'd always secretly supported him. Uncle Brian's family was convinced I was sympathetic to Aunt Lisa, arguing I clearly sided with her by not publicly backing him. No matter what I did, someone found a reason to be upset. The pressure kept building. Several family members even demanded I apologize for embarrassing the family with the Reddit post. Some sent long texts about how my actions had damaged family trust. They acted like I'd betrayed some sacred family code by sharing our business outside the family. I felt trapped. Trapped. Thankfully, a friend noticed how overwhelmed I was and intervened. She reminded me that I didn't owe anyone an apology for trying to protect my peace. She pointed out that my family was using guilt to control me and suggested I set clear boundaries. She even recommended therapy, which got me thinking, maybe I needed a neutral person to talk to, someone who could help me make sense of this situation without taking sides. While I considered it, things at home continued to spiral. Rumors about me started circulating in the family. One relative told another I never cared about the family in the first place. 
Another insisted I'd been distant for years and used the property dispute as an excuse to finally break away. These assumptions grew, and soon enough, it felt like people were talking about me as if I'd abandoned the family entirely. Both Aunt Lisa and Uncle Brian seemed to believe that by not backing them, I was somehow working against them. They began claiming that I'd been feeding information to the other side, and that my neutrality was just a cover for taking secret sides. Nothing could be further from the truth, but it seemed the more I tried to stay out of it, the deeper I got pulled in. In the middle of all this, something unexpected happened. A cousin, who had stayed quiet throughout the whole conflict, reached out to me. He thanked me for staying out of the drama and said he respected my choice. He didn't offer advice or guilt trip me, he just wanted me to know he understood. It was such a relief to hear that I wasn't completely alone in this, even though he was one of the few voices of support. But despite that one moment of peace, my mental health was taking a serious hit. I started having trouble sleeping, waking up with headaches, and losing my appetite. The constant tension with my family was draining, and I began to wonder if I'd made the wrong choice by not taking a side. Every time a new accusation came my way, or I saw another cousin unfollow me on social media, I questioned if it would have been easier to just pick a side from the start. It was like I was being punished for staying neutral, and I couldn't shake the guilt building inside. As the weeks went on, I finally decided I needed to talk to someone. Whether it was therapy or confiding in friends, I couldn't carry the weight of this situation alone anymore. It felt like a storm had been brewing for so long, and I was caught right in the middle, with no sign of it clearing up anytime soon. Update 3. The family drama had hit a point of no return, and it was clear I needed to do something drastic if I wanted any peace. After weeks of accusations, endless messages, and being called everything from selfish to disloyal, I finally decided to reach out one last time. I typed a long message to close family members, explaining that I didn't want to take sides in the property dispute. I emphasized that I still loved everyone but couldn't keep getting pulled into this never-ending feud. I hoped they'd understand, maybe even respect my wish for peace. Instead, I received cold responses, if I got a response at all. Some family members read the message and didn't even acknowledge it. Others replied with dismissive comments or thinly veiled guilt trips. A few sent back vague phrases about family unity and not understanding the bigger picture. It was disheartening, but it also made my decision a bit easier. Since no one seemed willing to respect my boundaries, I decided to take a real step back. I began by skipping family gatherings entirely. With every event, I was sent more messages asking why I wasn't there, accusing me of abandoning the family. My absence seemed to stir up even more gossip, but it also brought a bit of relief. For the first time, I had some space to breathe, and I started therapy, realizing I needed help handling the guilt and stress from this family drama. Talking to a therapist made a difference. For the first time in weeks, I felt like I was finally prioritizing my own peace. But even therapy couldn't stop the waves of guilt completely, especially when it came to my mom. My mom had stopped talking to me after the Reddit post went viral, and despite my message to the family, she continued to give me the silent treatment. I finally called her, calmly explaining that I couldn't discuss the property issue with her anymore if we wanted to have a relationship. She didn't respond. Her silence stung, but it made one thing clear, stepping back was the right choice, even if it came with its own kind of pain. Around this time, I heard from a cousin that Aunt Lisa and Uncle Brian had started hiring lawyers. They were both prepared to take this feud to court, and the costs were piling up fast. Knowing they were spending large sums on legal fees only added to the resentment I felt bubbling in the family. It was like everyone was willing to bankrupt themselves over this property, dragging the rest of us along for the ride, even if we had no part in the conflict. Meanwhile, the situation was starting to affect my work. Usually I'm focused and efficient, but lately I'd catch myself distracted, replaying conversations with family or worrying about the next message that would pop up on my phone. My manager even noticed, asking if I was doing okay, and that was my wake-up call. I couldn't let this family drama seep into every corner of my life. To protect my peace, I created a private group chat with close friends who had been supportive throughout all this. They became my go-to-support network, reminding me that I didn't need my family's approval to live my life. Despite the distance, Uncle Brian didn't give up. One evening, he left a long, guilt-laden voicemail, talking about family loyalty and how I'd failed to show it by not supporting him. It was the same lecture I'd been getting from everyone, but somehow hearing it from him directly, with his voice low and disappointed, really hit a nerve. Still, I ignored the message. For the first time, I was firm about staying out of it, and it gave me a strange sense of relief to know I didn't have to please everyone. Then my sister, who'd been one of the loudest voices pressuring me to choose a side, decided to confront me once more. She sent a series of angry texts, accusing me of ruining the family by refusing to pick a side. She told me that I was driving a wedge between everyone. Her words hurt, and it felt like a breaking point. After all this time, I'd been trying to stay neutral, to keep the peace, but somehow I was still the villain in her eyes. To add to the frustration, distant relatives, some of whom I hadn't seen in years, started reaching out to express their disappointment. They hadn't been part of my life before, but suddenly they wanted to weigh in on how I'd let the family down. Each message felt like another reminder of how deeply this conflict had infiltrated every part of my life. But despite the nonstop backlash, something unexpected happened. I began to feel a small sense of peace. I realized I'd done everything I could to stay true to myself. I hadn't taken sides and I hadn't caved to guilt or pressure. It wasn't easy, but knowing I'd held my ground felt like a small victory. I wasn't abandoning my family, I was simply choosing to protect myself. In that moment, I decided to fully commit to moving on. Therapy helped me see that I couldn't control my family's choices, but I could choose how much of it I let into my life. Slowly, I started focusing on my own growth, distancing myself from the family drama without cutting anyone out completely. It was time to put my energy into the relationships that actually brought me happiness and peace. Update 4. Therapy had been my lifeline through this family chaos and I could finally feel a shift. My therapist helped me see how I'd been pulled into a cycle of guilt and pressure, 
and I started to recognize the importance of setting boundaries. Over time, I noticed a new confidence growing, allowing me to stand firm in my choices without second guessing. But the family rift wasn't going anywhere. Aunt Lisa and Uncle Brian's feud only grew uglier, and every family event had a Team Lisa or Team Brian atmosphere. I heard through the grapevine that they were both now knee-deep in legal battles over the property. With each update, I was more relieved to be on the outside, looking in. Then, out of the blue, my brother reached out. He had been one of the loudest voices pressuring me to pick a side. This time, though, his tone was different. He apologized, acknowledging the stress I'd been under and admitted he hadn't considered the toll it was taking on me. It was unexpected, but appreciated. Slowly, I let him back into my life, although I kept my guard up. I didn't want to get too close in case the property issue came up again, but it was nice to have a piece of our sibling bond restored. Not long after that, my mom finally broke her silence. She called, tentatively asking how I was. Her tone was guarded, like she was unsure how to approach me after weeks of the silent treatment. She didn't mention the property feud, and I took that as a small victory. For the first time in a while, we had a conversation that wasn't tinged with pressure or disappointment. I kept it light, focusing on everyday topics and steering clear of family issues. Even though there was tension lingering, it felt like a step in the right direction. With these small reconnections, I decided on a rule for myself, no family drama discussions, especially about the property, at any gatherings or conversations. Whenever anyone hinted at bringing it up, I'd politely redirect the topic. A few relatives seemed disappointed, but most eventually got the hint. By keeping things neutral, I could maintain a bit of peace without getting dragged back into the feud. Through all of this, my friends had been the real support system I leaned on. They became my family in a way, and I found myself depending on them more than ever. They'd invite me out, celebrate small wins with me, and help distract me from the ongoing drama. Slowly, my work life improved, too. With less emotional baggage weighing me down, I could finally focus on my tasks and my productivity picked up. It was like my mind had been given a break, and I could breathe easier. As the months passed, I noticed that my choice to stay out of the feud was becoming more respected by others in the family. A few cousins reached out, sharing that they were getting exhausted by the drama themselves. They admitted they envied my decision to stay neutral and respected the way I'd kept my distance. It was strange, but comforting, to realize that some family members were finally seeing my stance as reasonable. One cousin, who had supported me early on, reached out again. We started talking more, sharing stories about the family's dysfunction, and bonded over our shared frustrations. It was a relief to connect with someone who didn't judge me for my choice and understood what it was like to be caught in the middle. Our chats became a regular part of my life, giving me someone to confide in when the family drama felt too close for comfort. Reflecting on everything, I felt a new sense of self-respect. I hadn't given in to the pressure or let guilt control my decisions. It hadn't been easy, but standing my ground helped me see that I didn't need everyone's approval. I accepted that some family members might always see me as the villain in this story, and I was surprisingly okay with that. They could see me however they wanted, but I was done letting it affect my peace. Over time, a few more relationships in the family began to mend. I reconnected with relatives who weren't as entangled in the feud and had kept their distance, like I had. We could chat and catch up without diving into family issues, and that was enough for me. I kept a firm distance from the conflict, setting clear boundaries, and it felt like I was finally opening a new chapter. As a final closure, I decided to update my Reddit post. I wanted to thank everyone who had offered advice and helped me see the value of boundaries. In my last update, I shared how standing up for myself had led to more peace and stronger connections with people who truly respected me. I expressed my gratitude and the lessons I'd learned about prioritizing mental health, even when family expectations weigh heavily. With that last post, I closed the door on that chapter. It was time to focus on my happiness and health, leaving the family feud behind me. The property battle might still rage on, but I'd made my choice to step back, protect my peace, and not look back. Update 5. In a recent therapy session, my therapist encouraged me to consider forgiveness, not to forget or excuse the hurtful things that had happened, but to release the lingering resentment that kept me tied to the family feud. I'd been carrying so much tension, and letting go, even slightly, felt like loosening a knot that had been holding me back. Soon after that session, I had a chance to talk to my mom. We hadn't had an honest conversation since the property dispute began. This time, I shared how hurt I'd been by her ultimatum and the silent treatment that followed. It took her a moment, but she finally admitted she hadn't thought about how her demands would affect me. Her apology was hesitant but genuine, and though it didn't erase everything, it helped us move forward. For the first time in a long time, I felt like we were beginning to understand each other. Around this time, my cousin, who had quietly supported me from the sidelines, reached out with an invitation. He was hosting a small family gathering and had specifically chosen not to invite either Aunt Lisa or Uncle Brian. He wanted a peaceful get-together where the property feud wouldn't be on the agenda. The invitation felt like a breath of fresh air. It was a simple gathering, but it was one of the most relaxed family gatherings I'd been to in years. We talked, laughed, and caught up without anyone mentioning property disputes or choosing sides. It was exactly what I'd been missing. My friends, who'd supported me through every twist and turn of this saga, decided to host a family-free Friendsgiving. It became an instant tradition. That Friendsgiving was so warm and welcoming, and we even made it a point to go around the table, sharing what we were grateful for, without any family-related drama hanging over us. It gave me a whole new perspective on family, and I started seeing my friends as the family I'd chosen. They were the ones who had my back, without expectations or conditions. In the middle of all this, an unexpected surprise came at work. I received a promotion. The timing couldn't have been better. 
having something positive to focus on was exactly what I needed, and I realized how much clearer my mind felt now that I wasn't weighed down by constant family tension. With this promotion came more responsibility, but it also brought a renewed sense of purpose and pride in my work. It felt like I'd finally regained control over my life, focusing on what truly mattered to me. To keep my peace, I made a decision to keep my family contact minimal, especially around the holidays. I knew that with Aunt Lisa and Uncle Brian still at each other's throats, every family event would be a potential battleground. So instead of forcing myself to join, I decided to skip out on the usual gatherings. I spent the holidays with friends, embracing the joy of a drama-free celebration. For the first time in years, I actually looked forward to the holidays without the dread of family conflict hanging over me. One of the best decisions I made was taking a social media detox. I deactivated my accounts for a while, giving myself a break from family posts and the tension of seeing new updates from relatives involved in the feud. It was refreshing to be disconnected from that world, and I found I could actually relax and reconnect with people on my own terms. No more vague posts or indirect comments aimed my way, just peace and privacy. Then, out of nowhere, my sister, who'd once accused me of ruining the family, reached out. Her message was sincere. She admitted she'd overreacted and that her anger had been misplaced. It was a surprising turn, and though it took time, we began rebuilding our relationship, slowly and cautiously. I appreciated her reaching out, and we agreed to move forward, steering clear of any mention of the family drama. When I attended another family gathering, I was greeted with the usual attempts to drag me back into the gossip circle. Relatives tried dropping hints about the feud, hoping I'd jump in or pick a side. But I politely, firmly declined to engage, letting everyone know I was done participating in family disputes. This time, they seemed to understand that I wasn't budging. I felt a new sense of calm, realizing I could enjoy time with family without feeling pressured to take on their battles. Reflecting on everything, I could see how much I'd grown since the conflict began. Setting boundaries had once felt impossible, but now it came naturally. I no longer felt guilty for putting my mental health first. I'd found a new balance, and it showed in my everyday life, better sleep, less anxiety, a clearer focus on my goals. I knew Aunt Lisa and Uncle Brian were still entangled in their endless feud, but it didn't affect me anymore. Their ongoing battle over the property continued, but it was no longer my problem. They could spend all the time and money they wanted fighting each other, but I was finally free from the drama. I'd taken control of my life, and I didn't regret it for a second. As a final closure, I decided to write a thoughtful email to my immediate family, explaining my decision to stay out of any future family conflicts. I expressed my love for each of them, but made it clear that I couldn't sacrifice my peace for their battles. The message was well-received by some, ignored by others, but I felt lighter after sending it. Then, for the last time, I posted an update on Reddit. I wanted to thank everyone who had encouraged me to prioritize my peace, sharing how setting boundaries and protecting myself had truly transformed my life. I'd learned that sometimes standing alone meant standing stronger and that family expectations didn't have to dictate my happiness. It felt like the perfect way to close this chapter and finally, fully move on.